Hello, my name is Vicki Davis and I'm computer science teacher for grades 8 through 12 at Westwood Schools here in Camilla, Georgia. Last November, I went to the GAETC conference in Atlanta and met visionary David Warlick and decided that I would try wikis in my classroom. I thought that I would just do them just once, just so that my students would know how to use the technology. But what I found was increased incitement and just a new way of learning and managing my classroom. And it's been almost a year now, and it has totally transformed and made my classroom more exciting. So I'm doing this K-12 conference to share with you what has worked and what hasn't, and also to give you the chance to experience wikis for yourself. I'm excited to be presenting here at the online K-12 conference. Here is an outline of my video presentation. This video has a set of handouts that you may choose to print out. This will allow you to take notes and visit hyperlinks as I progress through the video. The wiki was invented by Ward Cunningham as he thought of a quick and fast way to put information on the web. As he was moving through the Hawaiian airport, a person helping him used the Hawaiian word for quickly, and wiki wiki caught his attention. Thus, the wiki was born and has become an easy way to use web pages that require no knowledge of HTML. The largest and most well-known wiki is Wikipedia. It is edited by hundreds of thousands of people in the world, and much discussion has emerged about its accuracy and the volume of information, which far exceeds that of Britannica. Scandals have rocked Wikipedia as libelous edits such as the operations manager of a trucking company who lost his job after editing the wiki biography of prominent journalist John Singenthaler to insinuate that he had a part in the kidney assassination, or the two DJs in England who fabricated trice with celebrities. So you ask me, why do students need to know how to wiki? Despite what we may think, online is not a joke. Students are graduating largely unprepared for an online world that takes what they post very, very seriously. It is our job as educators to stamp out ignorance and to teach students how to collaborate online in meaningful, effective ways. So why did I choose wikis? I had several initial reasons. Number one, it was free. Number two, it would run on my older six-year-old computers and my slower internet connection. And number three, it was easy to set up, monitor, use, update, and teach. And after reading Thomas Friedman's landmark book, The World is Flat, I've become convinced that effective wiki use also turns students into great collaborators, synthesizers, and explainers, as he discusses in his book. Our students will work in multinational firms, and techno-personal skills are essential. Students must also be able to cooperate with classmates, the rival school down the street, across the country, and around the world. Techno-personal skills are an essential requirement for everyone in a world of global collaboration. If you want to know more about this and the six pillars of an effective Web 2.0 classroom, consult the paper that I've included with this presentation entitled, The Six Pillars of an Effective Web 2.0 Classroom. This is an excerpt from my chapter in the soon-to-be-released book, Coming of Age, Version 2, by Terry Friedman, an educational consultant in England. Let's talk about the active portion of this project. You can see my award-winning class wiki at westwood.wikispaces.com. Only my students and I are allowed to edit it, so please don't ask to join the space. But we've created one for this conference at k12wiki.wikispaces.com. Should you choose to participate in the optional active portion of this presentation, you are invited to get a username on Wikispaces and join this space. And take about 20 minutes over the next few days to learn the power of wiki collaboration as you are paired with other teachers on a collaborative project. Don't worry, we want beginners to join in. Because this presentation focuses on the pedagogical uses of the wiki, I've posted some how-to information on the wiki at k12wiki.wikispaces.com. It will be fun, you'll learn a lot, and maybe you'll meet some new friends. 
And remember, beginners do not be afraid. You will not end up like this. I will do many things to help you if you choose to join us in our wiki project. So I hope you'll come on over and know that we are all learning together. Point four, the pedagogical uses of wikis in the classroom. First, it is important to know that there are several excellent free wiki websites, including Wikispaces, PBWiki, Wet Paint, and others. And you may also download open source wiki software programs and install them internally at your school. I do use Wikispaces because I like it, and no, I do not receive any compensation from them. That is what I'll use to demonstrate, but you may apply these same principles on any wiki software. To the use of wikis in the classroom, we will divide this into several areas. A, essential wiki methodologies. B, drawbacks of wikis and workarounds. C, organizing a classroom using a wiki. And D, actual classroom instruction via the wiki. Essential wiki methodology space, you will see four tabs at the top. We are currently on the page. This is the actual wiki page itself. You can look in the top right hand corner and see the username that I am logged in under. Our wiki page is viewed publicly, but only the students who are members of the website can edit the pages. The discussion tab is for discussion, questions, and offline conversation about the page. The History tab is the very powerful place that lets you see who's edited a page, what changes that they've made, and if you've deleted a page, you can restore it from here. Finally, the Notify Me tab is very powerful. This allows you to monitor the page via RSS or via email if you're not sure about how to do RSS. There's also a way to subscribe to the entire page, and I believe that's under Managed Space. I subscribe to the entire site via RSS in my blog lines, and that is how I grade. Now, there are a couple of drawbacks of wikis, and the most common is when people edit a page at the same time. Whichever student saved it last um, may actually write over the other student. Once you've taught students how to work around this, this does not happen very often. But there's a very simple workaround if this happens. All you need to do is to go into a page. I'm going to go into a uh, exercise here that one of my students has created. And you go into the page, and you can go into the history. And here you see several students, four students, have edited this page, two in one class and two in another. And if I wanted to see the changes, I can view this version. And I can see what changes this student made. If I click Show Changes, it shows the inserted text in green and any deleted text in red. I also have the, the option to revert to this version, which undoes the previous version changes. You may also, if just a portion of this is needed, you may also copy parts of this and paste it back into the page itself. So my essential tips for my students working on the wiki. Number one, make small edits. Do not leave the editing page open for a long time. It is not a word processor. If you have a piece of information, put it on the wiki and then save it. Number two, communicate with your partner. I often have the team sit by, side by side while working on the wiki. They are to let the other person know when they are in the wiki. If it is a cross-class project, they are to leave messages for one another in the discussion area of the page. Discussion does not occur on the wiki page itself. The page should be ready to read at any moment. Number three, know how to use the history. Each student should understand how to copy out of the history, compare two versions of the wiki page, and recover a deleted page. This is essential. Number four, know how to discuss. Each student should understand that the wiki article resides on the main page and discussions belong under the discussions tab. And number five, before you edit, click refresh. Refresh will load the most recent copy of the wiki page into your web browser. This way, your partner's changes are not lost. Let's talk about organizing a classroom using wikis. The wiki is the center of my classroom. It is both an organizational and an instructional tool. 
There are so many places online that you can use to teach. It's overwhelming. Blogs, wikis, podcasts, and other things I don't even understand yet. There's got to be a simple way to take all of this information and put it in one organized place. Well, there is, using a new technology called RSS. I take the information from our school website, school calendar, my teaching blog, class blogs, and put it on the home page of my wiki. Everything is there, including our lessons and projects. Now, some people have asked me why I group all of my classes together from 8th grade all the way up to seniors. I have one reason, synergy. A lot of cross-pollination of information and discussions occur between my classes all of the time. I even have study hall students who have had the class previously come in and sit in the back and join in discussions when it's a topic of interest. Students tend to surf mindlessly at home and other places. I want them to surf on my wiki and share information that they learn from one another. It stimulates their curiosity. Friedman has a formula in his book, The World is Flat, that I agree with. CQ plus PQ is greater than IQ. This stands for curiosity quotient plus passion quotient is of more value than intelligence quotient. Don't get me wrong. Knowledge is still very important. But I do not just teach information in my class. I teach kids how to learn. I teach them to hunger for more. I teach them to love learning and to never settle for getting by when they can become an expert. Wikis breed experts by nature. And putting all of my classes together, I feed the curiosity and passion of my students. It's almost a one-room schoolhouse on the Internet where younger students can listen in on advanced conversations with older kids and vice versa. It is truly a great environment. Now let's talk about classroom instruction via the wiki. I have six methodologies I use with my wiki page. They are lesson summaries, notes collaboration, concepts introduction and exploratory projects, learn shares, individual assessments, and rewards. I'll cover each and give you an example. Although wikis are a team responsibility, I do make it clear I give individual grades. If they do not contribute, they do not receive a grade. One use of the wiki is for lesson summaries. In my computer fundamentals class, each team is assigned a lesson to teach to the class. They also proofread the papers before turning them in to me. The day before the test, they are required to create a summary wiki of all the information they have taught, including screenshots, steps, and hyperlinks to other websites that would help a person learn. What you see on your screen is one such example. All of the shots that were taken were done in, uh, were taken off of their computer and edited in paint. This also serves as reference for other students and teachers who are not taking the class but want to know how to do a certain task. All lessons are to be written to the beginner and any acronyms are to be defined. I do not want them to use geek speak and if something needs more information, it must be a hyperlink. Now it's collaboration. Many colleges are seeing the spontaneous creation of wikis for the purpose of sharing and creating the set of perfect notes. And I have as well. After completing their semester assessments last year, I allowed students to create study wikis on the subject of their choice. The students worked together and using all of their notes from the semester, they created amazing compendiums of information. Interestingly, many students said that after creating the wiki, they required much less study time. The process of reading their notes, the wiki information, and synthesizing and summarizing it into a cohesive wiki page cemented it into their minds. During this time, I also spent some time contrasting ethical and non-ethical academic uses of wikis. Many colleges are seeing unethical use of wikis, but to date I have not. I think perhaps because our work is preceded by discussions of wiki ethics, and I subscribe to all student-created wikis. The way I describe it is this. Posting answers to tests or worksheets is unethical. Sharing notes and online discussions about material for review purposes is ethical. For my very first wiki project, I was a beginner. I knew I wanted my students to learn about Web 2.0, but I wasn't sure where to start. So I split my two computer science classes into teams of two to three students in each class and gave each group one word. 
Their assignment was to explore and to create wikis on each of their words. At the conclusion, they were to demonstrate the topic to the class and lead a class discussion about it. I gave them several guidelines. Post meaningful, relevant information. Summarize information found on the Internet and link to it. I tell them to read their topic and ask themselves the question, what do I not understand about this topic? And then to proceed to answer that question and post their findings. I asked them to use the websites that they found and post their experiences. And I told them, do not delete the information of another unless it was redundant. Or they paraphrased and edited it to make it better. Each person has a part in this process. And although we can edit and improve another, we should never discount their opinions. The students not only learned about Web 2.0, they became experts and taught me. I was no longer the sage on the stage, but became the guide on the side. When students had to read information, synthesize, and summarize it, they truly became experts. Anytime I have a team project, I almost always conclude with a team wiki. Recently, after completing a module on computer safety and privacy in computer science, my students had the following instructions. After completing your presentations, you are to go to the wiki. Using at least two additional online sources each, write a summary of the important information from your section. Your audience is a computer beginner. You may include hyperlinks and should also include graphics. Be careful not to plagiarize anything from your textbook. My computer science class is producing excellent college-level work that is not yet cluttered with geek speak. As they become educated on topics, the wiki becomes a springboard through which they can educate others in their lives. If you truly want your students to learn your topic, you turn them into teachers. Individual assessments. Our school has moved away from traditional semester exams to genuine assessment projects that cumulatively assess. When asked to propose an alternative to an exam, I grudgingly turned away from a 250 question, two hour exam to a multi-week wiki project in computer science. They had to recommend the complete hardware and software needed by a person in a particular situation. And you're welcome to review these projects online at our school wiki. The assessment was open book, and they said it was harder than any exam they had ever taken. I thought it took more comprehension of the subject, and because they were doing it at Christmas, some of them were actually researching for the computer that they wanted. They could review each other's work, but I found that it did not cause plagiarism, but rather spurred students on to greater excellence and to recall more detail that they needed for their own projects. It also gave students who had a difficult time getting started a little push in the right direction. I found no academic dishonesty. I assessed the students based upon a grading rubric. Rewards. Here in South Georgia, we say you can only catch flies with honey, not vinegar. So the key to moving students from good work to great work, for me, has always been the use of awards. I modeled my Wiki Hall of Fame after Canadian middle school educator Darren Kropatwa. I have three awards, including one for Wiki Hall of Fame and honorable mention. For each Wiki in the Hall of Fame, I state why they're there. For each one that is an honorable mention, I state what it would take to move into the Hall of Fame. I also include the criteria for Hall of Fame status, which just so happens to be my grading rubric. But remember, as I share in my foundations of an effective Web 2.0 classroom, the key is the teacher. A teacher who hates wikis will fail with wikis, I guarantee it. You must be willing to have a few bumps initially as students delete each other's work and go through the frustration of troubleshooting. But you know what? When they get in the real world, it is going to happen, and they need to get used to it. Things don't work right in the real world. And people who succeed are those who can get over it and fix it. Wiki assessment strategies. I use rubrics for every project. Students will perform poorly without guidelines. And since I went to an engineering school, Georgia Tech, I'm used to having systems and methodologies. It is unfair to expect students to read your mind. I give my students the grading rubric before their first project. 
I always return the rubric and give a window for what I call corrections. I have posted my assessment rubric for you with this presentation. The aspects I grade on include the collaborative effort, visual appeal, organization, hyperlinks, original intelligent wording, spelling, grammar, and punctuation, and whether the project was completed. Just a few notes on these items. For graphics, do the graphics add to the message? Are they distracting? And they, are they used where clarification is needed? Is it cluttered? Organization. Wikispaces will organize a page through the use of table of contents tag. It takes all the headings and turns them into hyperlinks. Thus, I require all of my students to have a table of contents on their page and organize with headings. Nothing should be underlined except a hyperlink. Hyperlinks. A wiki page without hyperlinks is a dead wiki. An effective wiki hyperlinks sources and gives readers additional information about the topic. Because most people tend to not trust wikis, after all, they don't know the authors, you must include a variety of hyperlinks to be considered an effective source of information. As people follow your hyperlinks, they will begin to look at the information you've linked to. They will learn that you're an authority and that you've done your homework. Make sure that you have checked your hyperlinks and that they work. Original intelligent wording. The effective wiki summarizes information but never copies it. It cites its sources. The wording is intelligent and meaningful and jargon is not used. Wikis may be read by a global audience and authors must keep that in mind. Spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Students who are not strong in spelling are encouraged to copy the information into a word processor and spell check or use a, a nice little add-in called HyperWords to do so. I also have areas for improvement, including the use of multi-sensory tools, including sound and video, and the use of RSS feeds and other cutting-edge tools. But as Rome wasn't built in a day, it takes a while to move to that point, and you have to start off with simple wikis. Now let's address some common questions from school administrators. Most educators are concerned because they make, mistakenly think that anyone can edit a wiki. Just as there are many flavors of ice cream, there are many kinds of wikis. You can control two things on most wikis, permissions for editing and permissions for viewing. Let's look at editing permissions first of all. You have three types. Public, which means anyone can edit the wiki. Members only with authentication. That means that they have to be verified and you have to add them to the wiki and administrator only, which means that the owner is the only one that can edit the wiki. Viewing permissions. You have two types, public and private. The, in the public type, anyone can view your wiki, although they may not be able to edit it. Private, only members are allowed to view your wiki. This truly gives you the flexibility that you need to meet your school requirements, even if you have it on the internet. The nice thing about having your wiki available on the internet is you will find that students will work on the wiki at home, will discuss their wiki work at home with their parents, and truly make the content of the wiki become part of their lives. And that's what any good teacher strives for. Second question I get a lot is what about the students creating profiles that release too much information? I'm an advocate for pseudonyms. The Wikispaces service I use does not allow for a lot of customization on the user profile. However, as you add students to your space, you can give them feedback or refuse to add them to the space unless they create another more appropriate name. When do you wiki and when do you blog? We use both in my classroom. I post a question of the week for each class on Class Blogmeister, and I have a weekly free post for most classes. We use the wiki for fact, objective information and the blog for our opinions. When I want the students to write individually, form an opinion, I ask them to blog. However, they don't miss the blogging assignments because my teacher blog on Class Blogmeister shows at the top of the Wiki homepage using the technology I mentioned earlier called RSS. They work very well together in tandem. Next question, how do you handle discipline? I find that discipline is not a problem. Number one, because I monitor the wiki closely. Using RSS, I know every change that happens. 
And if you do not understand RSS, there's also an option to have the changes of every page emailed to you. Number two, because my students know that the online world is an extension of the offline world, this is absolutely vital for us to teach our students. The online world has offline implications. I deal with problems swiftly and decisively. If it was posted in the summer or at night, it is still in my classroom. It is still dealt with appropriately. The first issue I had, I dealt with it decisively, and I've never had a problem since. In conclusion, wikis are just one component of many Web 2.0 ingredients that you can use in your classroom. As you experience this amazing K-12 online conference, remember this. Do not be overwhelmed. Using another South Georgia analogy, you cannot swallow a watermelon whole. You cut it into small bites. Your administration may not be ready for a public wiki, so go with a private one. Wiki is giving away no ad free private wiki spaces. You can download and install one on your local server. There are other options for you. The only wrong thing in our changing world is to do nothing. You can return to your classroom and pretend the rest of the world doesn't exist, but it will catch up with you. I tell my students that I do not teach doorknobs. A doorknob is a person who sits there waiting for someone to turn them and make them move, and then they go right back into their former position. This is a competitive world with thousands lined up for high-paying jobs that require collaboration, big-picture thinking, and working together. The answers to real life are not always spelled out in black and white in a textbook. They have to be sought out. So whether you wiki or blog or podcast or something else, do something and start somewhere. I invite you to go to the k12wiki.wikispaces.com and set up your username in Wikispaces right now. Then, ask to join the space. Make sure you tell me your name, your position, where you teach, and your subject so that I will allow you to join. This information will not be released to the public. I will help you and remember that a year ago I knew nothing about wikis. So beginners are welcome and will never be looked down upon. So, what are you waiting for? Learn how to wiki with Vicky.